in a land of mystical wonder, and the world gets even crazier and crazier. It's another. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there's always that bird that's just yeah, and the animal noise is just roaring off in the background. Just giving you some background sound. Yeah, it's the ambiance. You don't notice how much you need something like that until it's not there. Like, have you ever seen the Big Bang Theory without a laugh track? It is so awkward. Mm-hmm. Where you're just like there. What? There is nothing funny. Like, like I saw it without the laugh track, and I'm like, I can't watch this. I just couldn't. After that, I'm just like, nope. Because I <laughs> should they make more shows that have like none of that in there, just to show you how much production goes into it, like a cringe factor. Like they just make a show where it's just awkward. Who let the beans out? And then like everyone's just awkwardly <laughs> staring, like no laughter. It's like, oh, it's like it's one of those eighth grade moments where you're like, no, that just happened. That just happened. That is so terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't really notice how much you need on that. But on the aspect of like fairy tales, for instance, you know I'm a big fairy tale fan and you seem to be one mm-hmm. yourself when it comes to making the comics. What fairy tale would you want to live in? Oh, let's see. That that'd be a tough one. Uh like actually in the fairy tale or in the world of the fairy tale. Okay. That that changes the question up, but Maybe, it does. <laughs> maybe like if you could pick what's one of your favorite like stories or fairy tales you'd have to say like and then I because I look at that like kind of like a little bit like a religion in a way where it's like you look at the religion how much of it is actually like how it was told like you know what I mean did Moses part the seas I have no clue or was it something a lot smaller scale so it makes you and it all comes from that one show what is it um or not one show the one game uh with the oh my god, I can't believe I'm blanking on it. It's one of my favorite ones from Telltale Games with uh Sheriff Bigsby. Oh, um, which I actually have a dog named Bigby, which is named after him. <laughs> a wolf among um, us, that's wolf what among it's called. Us. Yes. So imagine if like because that that whole game is based on like a corrupted version of what the fairy tales actually were, where it's like they're trying to survive in a normal world. So what fairy tale is your favorite? And what do you think it's actually like if you had to really look at that? Like Snow White doesn't seem like what it would be like eating an apple or something and going to sleep forever and seven dwarves. Like you're telling me none of those seven dwarves had any dirty thoughts. <laughs> not in Disney world, <laughs> not in the Disney world, but this is the real world. What do you think? Oh my God. All right. I, I don't know. One of my favorites has always kind of been, I think Hansel and Gretel. Okay. What's what, what do you think about Hansel and Gretel? That's the kids going into the forest, going for uh, finding a house made of gingerbread. Right. And then they get caught by a witch. Right. But it even starts out darker than that right at the very beginning because the, their mother dies and their father's new wife that wants to get rid of the kids. Ooh. And he agrees to get rid of the kids. I Look, I've heard many fairy tales when I was a kid, but that's not how they told me that story went. Oh, yeah. So they lead them off into the woods to lose them in the woods. Like ditching but a dog kids... like those sad videos you see yes. where someone just, yes, oh, my God, exactly. that's terrible. So, but the kids leave a trail. Um, I believe, what did they use the first time? It wasn't breadcrumbs because the second time they tried it, they used breadcrumbs and the birds ended up eating the breadcrumbs so they couldn't find their way back. What kid is being attracted by breadcrumbs? Like I have panko chips in my pantry, but I never decided to use those. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, now you can. If you decide to go walking in the woods, bring your panko trip chips with you. <laughs> this is not a PSA for the pedophiles or anybody listening that wants to attract <laughs> kids into the woods. No, I'm no. Just saying. <laughs> but the uh, yeah, so they 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 get lost in the woods because the parents want to get rid of them, and then they find the a gingerbread house out in the woods. And the whole idea is that the witch eats children. And she decides to lock up the boy and feed him to fatten him up. And the girl will work, will clean the house and and, and do work and probably be eaten later. Let's PC that story. <laughs> if it was be, the girl, consume, if I say if it was, later. if it was the know. girl that was getting fattened up, first of all, they would be like, "That's body shaming," and also the fact of like, why does the <laughs> why does the girl have to clean up? Why doesn't it do? It's the guy's duty now. Like you'd have to whole PC that whole story. You couldn't make a movie about it today. I think he was already a little plumper than his sister. Well, we'll go with the he was already closer to mealtime. Okay. So is it like 
it's not a, it's not a gender it's not a gender thing it's a uh weight thing <laughs> maybe like if you look at the actual story to it it was just like a bunch of kids that started eating this crazy woman's house and this crazy yep. woman was like all right well you guys seem like you're hungry so i'm gonna feed you and then you know it just escalated into this whole thing where the kids were maybe the demonic children that killed the witch and tried to put her in the oven and she was like, I was well, just baking you a chicken pot pie. And then like just could, that them. could have been the story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why is that one your favorite out of all of them? I it's not used much. It's 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 not like it hasn't been polished by Disney or somebody else. Um, I, I think when I was little, I remember being enraptured by the was it the musical like there was an old musical or something and it was very dark and i always loved villains and i'm like wow this thing starts out dark the parents are dark now the witch is dark you know it was just yeah most people drop yeah. their baby off at like a fire department these guys were like we're right, gonna right. put them into the woods and i don't think they were like babies they were actually like little kids like no they maybe, were children they yeah, were yeah, eight or nine. Oh yeah they they were little children and yeah and then the witch uh got thrown in the oven and killed so <laughs> how did that get turned into this like wonderful story you hear as like a, a fairy tale bedtime story like that didn't seem like that would be one that would fit that narrative see now i don't i don't think hansel and gretel has become the wonderful modern bedtime story and maybe that's one of the things i like about it they haven't really found a way to polish it you know <laughs> it's kind of just well, like they polished up the uh, Little Red Riding Hood. That's a story that you t would tell your kids like sitting down like by oh, yeah, their bedside yeah. or something. But it doesn't make sense because, first of all, the wolf ate the grandmom. But nobody yeah. really talks about that. So that's stage what? That's murder number one. And then yeah. what? The girl comes in. The wolf tries to eat the girl. And then a random axeman or woodsman comes in and chops the wolf in half and splits him open. First of all. Is this just a random dude going to other people's homes and just breaking and entering and just chopping people up? And second of all, in <laughs> front of a little girl, like you can't like, hey, go outside well, to, real quick while I handle this. To be this. fair, in, in the original story, he swallowed the little girl as well. What? And and oh, yeah, oh my goodness, I got things to teach you here. Apparently I have done my homework. <laughs> it's education time. So so the big bad wolf swallows the grandmother, takes over her role when when – Little Red Riding Hood comes in. He eats her as well, and then he falls asleep because he's had a big meal. <laughs> Both two people, um, and then the, the woodsman—not well, two people, more like one and a half. She's kind of small, right? It counts like a half. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but the um, he swallowed he swallowed them whole, so they're they're intact. That's that's the key. You got to remember, he was so hungry he just swallowed them whole. Okay. Um, and then the woodsman heard indigestion, I suppose. And I don't know if he and grandma had a thing going on. I, I don't know. She was, you know, single lady out in the woods in her house, you know. But he came in and he cut the wolf open and pulled them out and filled the wolf with rocks. Why rocks? Because the wolf would then sewed him up when the wolf woke. So this did not wake the wolf up in the original story. Whoa, hold on a second. If I'm wearing socks and I fall asleep, I wake up because that's uncomfortable. You're telling me that the wolf was able to be cut completely open. The Are they still alive inside the stomach? Yes, yes. This is why you are. chew your food. Have you ever been to a steakhouse and just people <laughs> that's just right. You don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Terrible. <laughs> so, yes, the wolf remains. Uh happily asleep during the whole thing uh wakes up oh you know he's like oh i'm so full you know heavy and he goes to get a drink from the well and he falls into the well and dies and that's seen as what and seen okay <laughs> but it's for the kids though is that like a why is that a good tale the wolf ends up dying so there is murder in the story um it's a good tale i guess it originally taught people very basic things like don't go wandering off into the woods. Chew your food. Um, don't don't talk to strangers. Yeah. Um, don't let a stranger into your house. See? See? And uh, don't eat rocks. <laughs> I think there's a better way to maybe do all that stuff when you're talking to your kids before they go into dreamland. But 
I wouldn't yeah. say that one's my favorite. Like I started like kind of doing a little bit more research onto the stories and all like the folklore stuff. Like Jack and Jill went up the hill, you know, that whole story. But then mm-hmm. it's like Jack fell down and broke his crown. I literally thought he was wearing like a crown, like a prince. And they mean oh, no. crown by like the His top head. of your head. And I'm like, oh my yes. God, like I felt like my childhood was a lie. Like I started thinking about all the, like <laughs> you ever see like Shrek and then you watch for like all the stuff that you didn't get as a kid. And it was like the giant mm-hmm. tower. And he's like, do you think he's compensating for something? Now that I'm older, I'm like, oh my God, they slipped so much behind my eyes. I didn't even realize. See, I was old enough. I'm, I'm a little older than you. So that when Shrek came out, I, I got those things. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, my probably my favorite fairy tale, if I had to choose. Does does Hercules count? Because I feel like that's a bit of a story. Yeah, like it's, that's a it's, Disney it's, kind of one. Well, I mean, you can go back to the, the original story, which is, you know, Disney one's loosely based on. If you want to go back to like Greek mythology. Yeah, well, that's like the Greek mythology one's better. But here's where I like where I feel like. Like, for instance, your work, for instance, the comic kind of side of things with like the fairy tales and including that aspect of things. It's a better way to get people to learn stuff. And I under I take that back to like I was telling you before about when I discovered graphic universe comics when I was a kid in school. Those were books that I read for my reports and stuff. But it taught mm-hmm. me about the Mayans. It taught me about Greek mythology. I learned all about Hercules. But it's a funner way. And I'm like, we could definitely do that with our history books now. Like a better way to learn about George Washington or Benjamin Franklin is if you legit – turn it into a comic book then he could tell all the harsh stuff like that you know his teeth were made of slave teeth like you just throw that in there and kids are like it's a comic book so i enjoy it it's like yeah yeah (laughs) there's like a a magical buffer there you know (laughs) we're just gonna throw in some of these terrible facts but because it's here and not mom and dad telling it to you while you're lying down trying to fall asleep it's gonna be a little more easily processed disney's solution for everything just animated it makes it a hell of a lot at a song Add a song. That's all you got to do. Yeah, that's true because I thought I hated musicals. Like, imagine this. Imagine you hit your head, Jay, right now. You're about to – you just slip, fall, hit your art easel. Ready? Then you wake up – Oh, man. Yeah. You wake up from this this little thing, and everything is completely cartoon, just like a comic book. Your whole life is a comic book. That means when you shut the door, there's a part that pops out that says slam or – bang and then that's your whole life do you think you could handle that do you think it would make the world better it would make the world different um i think i would mess around with it for a while it would entertain me for a while but then it would just become the norm kind of like this is the norm i don't think it would make anything better people would just kind of adjust yeah, like if you're born into it, I think you'd just be so used to it, you wouldn't know what anything else was. But I was watching like those right. worst emergency room cases of all time, and a woman had hit her head super oh, hard. Uh, uh, yeah, the hospital would be a uh, tough place for this these effects. To, you know, I mean, different sound effects. <laughs> it'd probably make it a lot better. Like some dudes getting like CPR, and every time he hits them on the chest, it's like bang, pop, zoom, zip. It's like all right, well, Bill Cosby yep. is apparently narrating this comic book, but um. <laughs> This woman in the emergency room uh, episode, she had hit her head so hard that everything got translated into song. So she was so it was like a lot like a Scrubs episode where they had that whole thing that's a musical. But literally, Mm -hmm. every time someone was me just talking to you, it would be in a rhythmic song motion. Your brain was comprehending it that way. And I was like, I couldn't do it. I can't even watch a musical. I can't sit five minutes into a Disney thing without being like, all right, come on. Another song. Really? It's got to be it's got to be catchy. It's got to be catchy, but I don't think I could live my whole life on that concept. Like, I think cartoons no, would be a lot no. more fun, or at least an animated series. Not Disney animation, though, like legit comic animation. Like like the, the old Batman cartoons and stuff like that? Yeah, like stuff that looks more serious. Like, Disney's just like a... Or happy... even like the Into the Spider-Verse thing? Yeah, okay, I haven't seen that, so don't spoil stuff. Oh my goodness. We're having this discussion about sound effects popping up as words and things like that, and you haven't seen, like, the current modern embodiment of that? No, because I can't get past the fact that I think it's still Tom Holland under the suit. Yeah. Well, I got issues. Give it a, give it, give it a go. Give it a go. Give it a just kind of just, you know, put on your, your seatbelt, hang on, have yourself a, a nice cold one in your hand, and do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll give it a shot, but honestly, I'm more entertained on like the fact of like, if you could live in a comic book, what comic book would you choose? What series? Cause I've talked to, I mean, my expansive knowledge on comics isn't that much. I never really, cause just cause when I got older, you know, that era kind of phased out, even though it's coming back, but everything's translated onto the phone. But right. I, I like the original pieces to it. Like I was telling you, I like that paperback. I like that Chris feel of a page and stuff. When you flick it and you get to see the other side and stuff. But um, yeah, like what what comic book do you think you could survive in? Which one would you want to survive in? <laughs> that that gets tougher. That that's right up there with the where in Game of Thrones would you want to live? Because it all just seems like it'd be real tough for Joe Schmo to survive in any of these situations. I have not seen Game of Thrones either. <laughs> Let's just say most places seem like kind of terrible places to live. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, it, we're, we're, we're talking about like, all right, if you were born into a Conan comics, I think you would develop the strength of a Conan. Like, okay, okay. All right, so I can I adapt. Like, it's not like all of a sudden I'm like magically teleported and here I am standing in the middle of I'm not propping you in with like a, or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm not propping you in the middle of a war with a flannel and a freaking art easel or nothing like that. I'm literally, like if we're Bob Ross, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm giving you Bob Ross magical powers where you can paint a canvas and this time we get to jump into the canvas. Kind of like the Purple Crown, that book. I don't know if you ever remember that. Or TV show, Chalk Zone. You remember that? Chalk Zone, no. I was actually thinking Peanut Butter Solution. Do you remember that? No. There's an age gap. Oh. <laughs> There's a big age gap. There is an age gap. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like being able to, I think that would make it a little bit more fun. Like, cause I was learning a lot about history of like, first of all, art in general, back in the day, do you think it would be easier to create art or do you think it's easier now? Cause I look at it, it is a little bit more complicated with technology, but I feel like we're going to get to a point where we can put on virtual reality goggles and be able to use a type of acrylic paint or some type of paint that could simulate literally make it come off the page. Um, there already is that, actually. Everything but, I think of is already fucking created, Jay. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. <laughs> it's um, I completely lost. I think nowadays it's actually a lot easier because you have ways of sharing. Back back in the day, if you drew your own comic or something, unless you were working for a publisher like Marvel or DC or, or one of one of these big guys, you basically could go to a copy machine at the at the drugstore and you know get out some nickels and print some pages, staple them together, and hand it to your friends, and that was about the extent of your of your reach. Where are you, you know going? I mean. Where the printer takes nickels? <laughs> Age gap again. Holy shit. I'm like, every time I go, it's like, you got to put in your debit card and then it asks for your pin. We didn't number. have debit cards then. I remember uh, playing back when I used to play Dungeons and Dragons, second edition. Damn right. <laughs> the, uh, like, me and my friends, we didn't have the money to, you know, one person would splurge and get the, the $25 book. And then we would go spend a whole afternoon at a copy machine in a drugstore with rolls of nickels. And we would make copies of that book for the rest of the rest of us <laughs> how long ago was that it was oh probably 30 years ago okay that's all right statue limitations is gone on that but that's like that's like downloading and pirating movies today like that was that exactly. was what she did back in the day holy crap. oh yeah oh yeah so one person would have the nice book and then the rest of us would have stacks of stapled and it was ridiculous. Some of these books were like, you know, 200 pages. <laughs> oh, my God. You just sit there with a lot of nickels, like going to the arcade. Are you guys going to the arcade? No, we're going to go copy this whole entire comic book. Yep, yep. And <laughs> that's what we did. Jeez. It was it was still cheaper than buying the book. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you got to work with what you got, I guess. But like, oh, yeah. Back in the day, like I, I started like – first of all researching about a lot of the art and how it was created but nobody even noticed like because i was there was a podcast i was listening to a woman was talking about um she was a scientist and talking about the study between you know all these gas emissions that are being produced into the ozone and everything but she goes it's not the first time you know gas is is bad for you it's also another time where it goes back to lead like back in the day they used to paint your nursery with lead paint they used to do oh, yeah. all these intense stuff but comics for instance all those little art things what they would do is the fabric of the brush the tip of it would be laced with a type of the paint is like an acrylic lead source and what they would mm -hmm. tell you as an art trick is to lick the tip of your brush to find it to out keep it 
and yep, out. Yep. So there's these pictures in a whole slideshow I was looking at of all these women and like men that have these inflamed like cheeks that are glossed over. I, and it was from I know some paint. people. Mm-hmm. You know I know people. some people that have gotten gotten. I know people. <laughs> I know people who have gotten um, lead poisoning and, and ca- cadmiums and other metals because of paints. Like to to think that you would go to the like that's just the, the hair starts falling out, all kinds of horrible things. That's terrible, man. Like, is do you think so? Art back in the day would be a lot more difficult. It's much easier now. Well, people are a little more aware of you know safeties now and you know, proper ventilation for toxic things. Uh, I mean, I have jars of, of pure pigments, which are very toxic. I mean, if I, I'll, I might mix them with some acrylic medium and stuff like that, make, make some, make some custom colors and stuff like that. But, but man, if I, if I started licking that stuff up, it would, it would do some terrible things to me. I just look at like the value back then, like with comics, like you could create so much more and add so much more where I feel like now you might be restricted on a lot of the stuff that might be offensive. Like you ever, does that ever cross your mind? If you're doing something, you have a homeless person eating a cat in a park, bro. Like that's gotta be effective to someone out there. (laughs) Hey, I think, uh, I think actually like what you were allowed to do and not allowed to do back in the day was far more restrictive I think there was less tolerance for variety. Like if you look back at like the the comics from the thirties and the forties, yeah, they had certain things were allowed. Like, like it was very sexist. Uh, the heroes and bad guys had guns and would shoot each other, you know? Um, but I think nowadays it's, it, there were different things that are tolerated nowadays. Like, I mean, back then you could have, you know, the white people are the good guys, the black guys are the Mexicans or what, you know, all this, like, yeah. like the same thing with the Westerns and stuff like that. And it's just nowadays there is less tolerance for that, but there's more tolerance for nudity, just straight up violence. Um, there's, there's, it's, it's weird how like we've given tolerance to certain things and, and then intolerance towards other things, it just kind of shifts. And and it's like when people like rag on like, uh, we'll go back to Disney, like song of the South, um, which is, you know, an old Disney movie at the time, you know, everything that was depicted in it was tolerated and nowadays it's, it's not. So they're like erasing it, you know, but it's like a product of it, of its time, you know, do you think though, that you can't really cancel a comic now? Like if someone's upset by it only on the concept of you kept on fucking reading it, like that, 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 that just doesn't, it, that boggles my mind how someone could be like, this comic offends me. I'm like, did you stop reading it? Did you put it down? Nobody forced you to go into it. That's the same argument you make when people get kicked off of Facebook and things like that. If somebody, somebody took offense. How dare you? How dare you bring that up? Dude? <laughs> somebody takes offense to something. Yeah. How do you get Nowadays, offended by we, a we, freaking Freemason episode? How do I get kicked oh, off oh, for 24 oh, hours? That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, first of all, it's you see them drive around. I was just trying to get more informed on what they were doing. I think that's a fairy tale you should make a book about that I can read. Jeez. <laughs> I, 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 I hit a nerve. I'm sorry. You hit a hard nerve, dude. I was so upset. I was like, hang on a second. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, and but, they put a Wikipedia link on my doesn't, episode. Doesn't that doesn't that add like legitimacy to your podcast, though? That's like street cred for your podcast. I don't give a shit about street cred. I you, care about and you were animal crackers and other stupid foods I like to eat. That's it. <laughs> okay, what kind of animal crackers do you like? Are the Barnum and Bailey ones and little red boxes your favorite? They don't. Uh, no, I like the Stouffer's. Do you like the puffy ones? The Stouffer's. Mm-hmm. Stouffer's ones? Yeah. You like the frosted or the uh, plain? I just found out there's frosted, dude. That changed my world. You're just there nodding your head in good. agreement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those frosted animal crackers. I, <laughs> dude, that 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 ruined me. I was in the store and I was like, "Wait a minute, they're frosted." And my buddy was like, "Yeah, you didn't know they were frosted." I was like, "No, I have, I, is it more money?" They're like, "No, it's the same price." I'm like, "Then why did my parents hate me?" Because when I grew up, all it was was plain freaking animal crackers. I didn't even know about this frosted adventure. Well, they, they don't have to pay for all your cavities. That's all. That's true. What about uh three bears? Because I start thinking of like animal crackers, golden grams. Three bears, dude. That's a good story. 
There you go. That's a good story about a girl who's, who breaks in and enters the house and should have been eaten by the bears. You can twist any of these stories to be like completely the other way. Like a girl literally breaking and entering, ate these three bear soup, slept in their beds. Like what sign of disrespect? Broke their furniture. Oh my oh, yeah. god. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because that that uh that Goldilocks theory, that that bear theory, is what and how we use to discover planets. Can you believe that? Is it now? So well, you know, yeah, we go in, we try their food, we. <laughs> Well, you know how there's the there's the one that's too hot, the one that's too cold, and the one that's just right. That's how they yeah. discover exoplanets. One that won't, because we have, I guess, limitations on what can establish or keep life. So they're like, all right, right. well, this planet's too hot, this planet's too cold, and this planet. And, and to clarify, right. that's only the way we can, the way we view life. Yeah, we like, don't like, even like, know about other alien – like they had that one comet. I was talking to a radio astrophysicist, and she named the comet perfectly, and she was like, there's no section. You can't call it a comet, and you can't call it an asteroid, but they're starting to think that it was created by extraterrestrial life because of the formation of it because there's nothing that we've discovered so far that can narrow that down, and I'm like – Right. That was fairly recent too. Yeah, I read about that. They, the, they were looking at it, and they're like, we don't know what that is. And then just there you go. We have enough comics on alien books. We have enough comics on this. Let's if me and you were gonna make a comic, I already know you make plenty. You already make all these amazing comics, and they're freaking good. That's why I was like, I sent you the fairy encyclopedia. I was like, where are you getting your knowledge for your fairies? Like one <laughs> they all have these mystical powers and they're like they're a lot like spirits, I would say. Not really like yeah, yeah. the well, magical, like fairly odd parents or anything. They're like spirits of like water spirit and all these other types of things. Mm -hmm. I just actually just started yesterday officially uh, putting together a tabletop RPG. What? Based on based on my 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 uh, world I created. You know how you got to make it is like there's a game that was like discontinued a long time ago. It's called HeroScape, where they would give you the land pieces to stack on top of each other, and there would be actual molds and things to create land formations. And then you get like. Mm -hmm. You can pick monks, dragons, angels, demons, whatever, cowboys, robots, all that stuff was included in it. That's how you got to make yours. Well, that's basically kind of what I've been doing. I mean, I just uh, yesterday crafted the the character build so you can create essentially any kind of fairy creature, mythological creature you want for your character. But it, like there's rules and, and limits so we can like control like how powerful it, you start out. Like so the person running the game can kind of gauge um, how how powerful the party is going to be at the beginning, you know, that kind is of it, thing. Is it a lot of good dungeon master where you still have to create the story? Um, yeah, yeah, you still need to have somebody who steers the ship. Okay. Um, so there'll be a dungeon master and then at least one player, but you can have obviously m multiple players. It gets more fun. Down with it. What are you going to call it? Uh, right now, I'm I'm using the title. It's just called Fay. Fay. Faye is going to be the name of the board game that I'm going to see in stores in the next year. There you go. It's a planned and out. You'll thing. have an auto. You'll have an autographed copy that you can put. A, you can start a little game shelf right behind you in the corner there on your screen, and there'll there'll be Faye right there. You'll be like, yeah, yeah, I know the guy who did that. Yeah. I, I'd rather take uh, you know, that our little friend from the first uh, time we recorded that's hanging up there in the back. I'd rather have him in my studio. He's up there. <laughs> He'd be stealing stuff. <laughs> I like um. I, yeah, I really like that idea though, because Dungeons and Dragons, I, I, it seems like it's kind of decreased in popularity, but they're fun games to play. Like I think I spent a, a lot of time spent in isolation. You know how much free time you have to be able to hang out with your family and play a game. Anything besides Monopoly, like that's you want to talk about a story <laughs> that made a different twist in society. That whole thing is based on capitalism and literally making your parents or family members broke. Yep. Special moment. Special moment. <laughs> I want to see you design a comic book based on like the Black Plague, like with the witch doctors and stuff, because that's one period of history I'm so fascinated with. Like, imagine if you took the screenwrite of a doctor or someone that was like Robert Liston, one of the innovators of uh, 19th century surgery back then, like creating learning germ theory, all these other types of things. You would have such like a good first person or third person perspective of that person's life going to all these. I imagine like. Well, doctor's arriving, and then it says date, January, whatever, and then you just have them go into this person's house and chop their leg off and like 
there you go. That's how we did it. Where do you put the body parts after you chop it off? Because I got my tooth taken out and they wouldn't let me keep it. So where the hell are they putting somebody's leg? I'm First of all, if they're <laughs> chopping my leg off, I'm like, let me keep that. That's mine. I want to put it on my mantle. If people can stuff their dogs, then you should be able to stuff your leg after they chop it off. Can you make a Gosh. story based on that? That's common sense, right? Come on now. I could see it. You're sitting there at the mantle, like leaning on it, having a pipe. You look over and go, man, I could use a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> on your stuffed leg. Oh, you yeah. could use a pedicure. That'd be great. You drop it off, like <laughs> drop it off at the uh, nail salon. You should, I think there should be more comics or more fairy tales. Like, what fairy tales out there that are old that have cannibalism in it? Because I feel like that's not specifically known at. Like, when I was a kid, that was a thing. That was like people talked about like cannibalism and stuff. Now you never hear about it. And I'm afraid it's going to be like quicksand where kids are never going to know what that is. And then that's when we're going to start encountering it. Well, they've, have you heard about the, uh, what's his name? The actor's name. Um, I can't think of his name. Helen DeGeneres. Um, so no, there's a um, the, it's stories are starting to come out about a, an actor who kept trying to get his girlfriends to um, remove the, a couple of their lower ribs so he could smoke them and eat them. The eat the ribs? Yes, he's like, you don't need those ones. You won't even know they're gone. That kind of thing. That's an actual actor, like popularly known actor. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think who it was. I have to Google this one. Uh, I'm Googling it right now, my friend. I don't know if that's true, dude. Unless you're talking about Kevin Spacey. Actor tried to eat friends' ribs. Army Hammer. Yep, yeah, Army Hammer. It, what, I guess one of his ex-girlfriends came out and said that he, that and then other ones have started to kind of come come out. Why does everyone that gets into like a giant scandal or something, they look like they would be involved in a scandal? This dude looks like a serial killer. Didn't like, you see him with like a lobster bib on right now with a human rib in his hands? <laughs> bring me some more butter. You know, like, <laughs> holy crap. More butter. Like, if you look at like, what's his name? Uh, Bernie Madoff, that dude. Like his name fit exactly what he did where he stole the money and ran off. Like, yep. They're just people where you're like, is anybody questioning the people that like you have a weird ass name like that? You fit your name. <laughs> Who is the one guy, Lyndon Johnson, that would always show everybody his Johnson? Like it's well, that's why, you know, Lyndon Johnson is the reason we have that term that was coined because he had a enormous, you know what? Is that why that's we why call we, it a Johnson? That's why we call it a Johnson. Yep. Oh, I thought that was like it just the name fit to a T. Like, but then you got you got Wiener there. Oh God! <laughs> I mean, I'm not judging on people's names because I can't. But on the same concept, like you have to look at like if there's a scandal coming out about a person and their name kind of says it, you can't just be like, "That can't be true." It's like, all right, that we might have to run with that plausibility. Yeah, you can't condemn them ahead of time for the name, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> At least vet your people. Good God. <laughs> like I felt bad for NASA when uh, they had Buzz Aldrin after I think it was like for the past couple of years, he's been going off saying that they found water on the moon and there's an obelisk on Mars. And then it came out that there was water on the moon. And then now everyone's like, are we vetting our astronauts? Because like he just started spouting off a bunch of craziness. People are like, oh, he's old. Nobody will listen to him. It's. It's crazy. <laughs> it's a crazy time. That's what I'm saying. You could make a comic book based on life because it already is pretty freaking insane. It just makes it oh, more yeah. watered down for people to be able to handle it, I guess. I guess. Oh, I mean, Do you really want to water down your cannibalism, though? Was it like soup? That's it. We can make a recipe book. Best ways to <laughs> fillet a person, I guess. But that I can't believe that's a real thing that that dude actually <laughs> tried to do that. Now, I, I guess we shouldn't condemn him ahead of time, but look, but it just seems kind of weird. If it quacks like <laughs> a duck and it looks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Probably a duck, but it could be a person imitating a duck. You know what? The only avenue I would see would be like a good 
buy into is if you took all the Disney movies and just made them extremely dark, like took the Disney filter out of it. Like what Disney movies like Cinderella, the glass slipper. I'm pretty sure the original story was that her feet were bleeding or that. What was it? The, um, the sisters shaved down their feet to try and fit it into the slipper. Her foot was too long. So she cut off their toes. And yeah. Then the they other shaved one, the feet. Her, her down. foot was too, she chopped off yeah the mother chopped off the the girl's toes whoa, so whoa, 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 whoa. the mother did that she had to make sure that shoe fit hold on a second i thought it was the the, the stepsisters that were shaving down and chopping off their toes to fit it in the slip well with the mother it, it, yeah that's not that's not a family event that's if <laughs> If I have to, it's like you're in saw. If I have to chop off my leg, I don't want some other person doing it. I'm going to have to do it because it's my foot. Well, you know, it, it was the stepmother that was trying to get the shoe on the on the daughter. So on his on her daughter. So I don't know anybody I would love or admire so much to be able to cut off my toes to fit it into a slipper. Like I don't I think not even for Kate Upton. I couldn't do that. Whoa, that's pretty serious. That is very serious. I love. What about my- two Kate Uptons? Oh shit! I'm just trying to figure out where the line is. <laughs> if you toss in Mariah Carey back in the day, and then you toss in Kate Upton, I might cut my toes off just to be able to fit into a slipper. Okay, you you won't need to walk because they can carry you around. And then like what with the with the witch that uh what made her look real nice for the ball or made her look or give her like a carriage and everything. Why didn't the witch just, or whatever the fairy godmother, just give her, I don't know, like the love and admiration of the prince? Did the love spell? Maybe, 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 maybe the godmother was kind of like the genie from from Disney's Aladdin. You can't make somebody fall in love. You can't kill somebody. You can't, you know. Maybe she had rules. You're telling me she has all that mystical power, and there's rules and regulations. There are. It's terrible. That, did you like the Aladdin movie? I thought it was pretty good. It's yeah, one of my favorite Disney's. But not the old one. I mean the new one, like the newest one with Will Smith. Oh, the remake? Don't give me that. It was good. It was it was something. What do you mean I'll give something? You that. It's it's, something. <laughs> I haven't heard Will Smith rap in forever. That was amazing to me. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will hold my tongue on my opinion of, of uh, the remakes of, of the Disney classics. If you had to, like, if, if that would be one that would it was be... one of the better ones. OK, okay. I'll, I'll just say that it was one of the better ones. What other ones are you comparing it to then? Which ones are bad besides the new Star Wars? See, I like the new Star Wars. <gasps> Why? You're what do you mean? <laughs> Did you see the originals? <laughs> yeah, like the prequels and all that. Oh yeah, and you thought the new ones? I've seen were good. all of them. I there were things I liked in them, and there were things I didn't. But I accept them. There's people who like completely like deny them, and it's like you got to get off your like like there's people that the original trilogy is it, and they don't accept anything else. And it's just like, come on, guys! Like like you you want to live in a world where where your your world of Star Wars ended in '83? Then so be it. But. I think it's also the fact that they got a new director and it went to a whole new like company. It's not George Lucas anymore. So then yeah. they, they just refuse to believe in that. It's like, but nobody does that with comics. Like every comic that you read, that's all different alternate universes. It's all these other types right. of things. And there's usually different artists and, and old, people behind all, them. All the old, I mean, I think what bent a lot of people out of shape was there were a billion books written that were all considered part of the Star Wars universe. And then Disney bought Star Wars and was like, you know what? All that stuff that's not not canon anymore you know what do you and mean it's not ticked the, off. you can't delete those no, they just when they bought the star wars thing they took all the novels and, and comic books and said yeah all this stuff that that george lucas said is is part of the story is not part of the story although they're starting to take pieces of it and bring it bringing it back in like they were there are things that have popped up in like the Mandalorian and, and there's been some things that have popped up in, in Rogue One, you know, they're, they're starting to like pull pieces out of the old Canon and bring it into the new Canon. 
I just I couldn't get with the new Star Wars because I didn't like still following the same old concept after it's been gone for so long. But the Mandalorian was really good because I felt like it was its own unique thing. I just didn't yeah, see and I think what... that's why a lot of people like Rogue One, too, I think, because it was just like, all right, we're going to, you know, take this world and just do something else, you know? It's like if you did your comics and then you stopped for 10 years and picked it back up, it would be a different effect than if Star Wars right, picking it back right. up 10 years later. Right. I mean, honestly, if the original Star Wars and New Hope was being filmed now, it probably wouldn't even get noticed. It, it, it was at the right time with the, the right level of special effects. You know, it was just it, it was a perfect storm when there were like hundreds of sci-fi movies that came out around the same time that just didn't work, you know? Can you imagine if we had like a major like apocalypse happen and then all like maybe 100 years from now, if future generations had to look through all of our media and they would consider that part of our history. So they're looking through your comic books and be like, well, this is what it was back then. There were fairies. There were homeless people eating cats. There was all this other type of stuff. Holy crap, oh, yeah. dude. Can you imagine my podcast being <laughs> like a sign for people like it's the Goodwill's Testament? It's like, don't listen to this. Are you insane? That's right. You they have a big statue of you up, like like, like it'd be like a on, on their Mars ob, obsolesque. There, there, there you are, <laughs> dude. If I was gonna be ruler of, if I was gonna have a statue of me built at like any type of planet, I would want it to be on Mars. But I wouldn't wouldn't want it to be of me. I want it to be of Diggum from Honey Smacks. <laughs> It's dig them, dig, dig them, dig them. You should literally make a comic that takes place with all the mascots from the serials. But if you do it, if you do it right, you could sell that to them, which they can use, or you can make it really, really dark and twisted and just get everyone to buy that comic because of how the fact they want to see the tricks rabbit just beat the shit out of some kids. Like, oh, okay. You see these tricks, he called these hands and it just starts clocking them in the face. Oh, are you? Do you know the comic uh, Mighty Mascots? Nope. Oh, okay. It's a, a indie comic actually. <laughs> oh, a, okay. A friend of mine created. Um, he he's doing really well with it. It's taken off all over the place. Um, I could actually probably send him your way if you want to talk to him about mascots. But his comic is about about um serial mascots that have come to life and they create a superhero team. But so it's it's not Captain Crunch. It's I forget the name, but they're all. You can tell which characters they kind of were. Okay, they're slightly obscured the so they don't get sued. Okay. Yes, exactly. That's but they, they they become they create a like a superhero superhero team battling. I think they basically battle like the the soggies and, and germs at the in the first like battling spoiled milk or something like yes exactly when you leave rice crisp or whatever that is in a bowl for too long it just becomes like oats like it's just this rough oatmeal Oosh. type substance yep yep basically <laughs> i would love to see like maybe the cereal mascots just like a wolf among us where they go through these dark turns like the rice crispy guys have like a crack addiction where it's like they just want to keep hearing that pop like i would love to see a comic book based on that I know that like uh, Family Guy does a lot of that kind of stuff too, where they'll they'll do like a little seg, a little off, off to the side, like like the Kool Aid Man, like like. <laughs> I just watched himself to death. I legit just watched an episode where it was the Kool-Aid man and his family. And he's like, I can't wait you to can't wait for you to meet my girlfriend. And then they're like, Oh, I'm excited too. And then all you hear is Yoo-hoo. And it's a woman in a Yoo-Hoo. It's a Yoo-Hoo bottle, but it's a woman. And she goes, Yoo-Hoo. Mm -hmm. And the dad's like, Oh no. And I'm like, yo, like I watched their documentary on Family Guy when Seth MacFarlane was talking about the show. And he was like, We did not expect it to get the traction it did. We didn't expect it to even last past 50 episodes. But and they hit like the 400 episode mark and it's like one of the long running sitcoms like the simpsons yep like the, yeah, Simps it's just the simpsons hit that line of being one of the long longest i guess animated shows because of the fact of they didn't really touch a lot of racial stuff because everybody's yellow like everybody's the same color and stuff besides maybe a few people but like it, it started picking up traction later when they were talking about like the accents, like the only thing you could pick apart was the voices of the people that played them. But like, you didn't really right. care because none of the content was so drastic. They just happened to predict a lot of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. They did. Like they even predicted uh Trump the president way they, back in the early nineties. They also <laughs> predicted our vice president now 
where she was wearing a purple suit. They had Lisa when she became president in the show and she was wearing the same purple suit. I'm like, are we, are, are they predicting it or are we just following the scr- the guidelines of the Simpsons? I think that's it right there. We are just, we are the Simpsons. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, if you talk to a couple of UFOologists out there, like I have, they like to think we're in a simulation. Well, so do the people who write the matrix. Do you feel like you're writing yourself in the matrix and the part that you're writing is actually a, like, you know, when you look in a mirror and there's a billion of you, if you line up another mirror next to that one, like behind you, you can look through that mirror and see a billion of you going all the way down the line. Maybe that's you. You're writing a comic and that comic is writing a comic about you and that comic is writing a comic about you and the comic is writing. The next thing you know, you are in this weird mix and pull where your brain just snaps and then you can't do math anymore. I guess then if my brain just snaps, I won't have to worry about it. <laughs> Is it better to know that you're being like if all of our lives were a story right now and someone's just writing them? Like you ever see that movie with Will Ferrell where the ladies typing? Yes, on- I actually started not that long ago. Yeah. So that movie, for instance, imagine if your life was like that. Would you want to meet the person that's typing up your life? Nope. It's just it's right up there with would you want to know how you die, how and when you die? I would love to know that, and I would love to tell the person that's writing my story if they could add a couple, like a check that slot. Bob Barker appears on my door with a five million dollar check. See what what you'd want to do is steal the typewriter. Then is what you what you're going for. No, steal the freaking typewriter. You can't do that because then you're typing your own story, and that wouldn't make sense. Because then you would give yourself unrealistic life accomplishments. Like I would get a Nobel Prize just for burping. Like it wouldn't make sense. I wouldn't want that. Well then don't write that that's what i'm saying yes, though is i can't do that i would have to have someone else type for me so i don't feel oh, like okay, i'm okay. initially putting it out there it would be so selfish imagine if you like you know even like writing yourself into a comic book's kind of hard unless you do it correctly where either you're making fun of yourself or you're doing something like that but if you make yourself the hero if you make yourself the best person in the world where everybody loves you then people look at you like what are you doing in your actual life that you need this like you're not doing you're spitting on puppies well, that's when you that's when you sit down and write down and nobody ever questioned him you write that in the next thing <laughs> nobody ever <laughs> said a word and anybody that did there's just a, a, a slideshow of you just closing a trunk with someone in it yep <laughs> and then they realize that foot hanging on the wall isn't yours wait a minute that's a fucking twist right there too oh my god <laughs> I really oh, want to that'd question be, the guy be, that's leaving that'd bread. That'd be funny. Going, going back to that story, like you hang up, hang it up on your on your wall, and you're like, "Yep, there's my my leg. Yep, okay." And then at some point, you roll up the pant leg, and you realize there's a tattoo there. It ain't yours. It's someone you, else's leg. Can you imagine people just like over for dinner? Like that's a really nice uh, arch you got up there. Uh, most people have like the head of a deer's. That's a weird thing. We mount the head of an animal in our homes. Not yep. like the fish on a wall type thing, but like we mount the head of a deceased deer and a, a gift of nature, I would say, unless you're driving a car on a highway at nighttime, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> but the fact that we mount those in our homes and that considers class or elegance, depending on what, who you are. Yeah, yeah it depends on what you do. I, I suppose like, you know, if you're the kind of person that, that hunts a deer and eat the meat and stuff like that and you and you just want to commemorate your slaughter of a little animal and imagine if that would have been switched around where you would mount a human person onto your wall do you think deers oh, do that in an alternate universe they just they're sitting obviously. there sipping a coffee and then which is no, it's, it's all it's all there. bumpers like the tougher the tougher deer you know because the, the people hit them with cars the ones that like survive and they take the bumper and they go hang it on the wall. Like most people talk about their <laughs> war accommodations. Like I've been in three tours. Then deers are like, I've been hit by five semis. And it's like they got all these bumper marks. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's got like like big, like mangled back legs. But he's like huge. He's like, yeah. It's one. It's there. It's one. He's got, deer he's with got, like with the, he's got the license plates and the and the bumpers from each of the vehicles like mounted on the wall. <laughs> it's just one deer and a, like a head in a wheelchair. And he's like, I've been hit by that guy over there has been hit by three 18 wheelers and he still lives. Yep. You kids never had it so good with your little hybrid cars. <laughs> that electric cars don't do shit to real steel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is that would be a show I would watch, dude. That's like a Rick and Morty episode where they're going back in time, and instead of like them sitting or humans sitting on a couch ordering pizza, it's couches sitting on humans ordering pizza. There we go. It's probably a Simpsons episode like that. The opening when, when the couch comes in and sits on top of the the Simpsons. I I need to contact the animators of the Simpsons to see if they can just write a Simpsons episode based on my life, and hopefully it'll come true. Why not? They're, I'm sure they're looking for things at this point. Uh, they've been what writing episodes for since the '90s, since like 1990 at this point. So I'm sure they could use a couple new ideas. <laughs> Jay, the only person I want to write comics for me is you. So I'm sorry. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You're Thank welcome. you. And I, I bet kiss... you say that to all the comic guys you have on your show. No, just you. I'd kiss you <laughs> on your forehead, but we're in a Zoom call. Is there anywhere uh, you want to promote any comics coming up that people can be looking forward to and the original ones also where they can find them at? Because you sent me, at least the ones you sent me, are really freaking good. Um, I still prefer a paperback copy, so if you need my address, I'll talk off air. All right, off air, we'll, uh, we'll set up something over here. Okay. Like a drug deal with um, comics. We'll meet in a parking lot in the middle of the night. It'll be awesome. Not I've when that homeless that. guy is I, eating I've, cats. I've, 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 sold, <laughs> I've, I've sold artwork. There was a guy whose wife refused for him to buy a painting of mine. So he talked to me off to the side, and we actually met in a parking lot at night, and he, he bought the painting from me. Did you not think you were going to get killed? <laughs> it was a well-lit parking lot. <laughs> does it matter i've my work is in a, my work's parking lot they just got the lights fixed i was sitting there and a dude comes up to the window and knocks on the window and i'm like roll down my window i'm like what and he goes are you the guy i'm supposed to meet i'm like what he goes oh i guess not and walks away i'm like you don't have the dude's fucking number like how did you how are you contacting did you just sit here and wait for eight <laughs> hours i just pictured some like a police detail watching us like out in that parking lot and I, I get out and I get this big old canvas with a picture of a man with chickens on it. And, and the guy That's the art piece of man with chickens. Yes. Can you imagine getting arrested? People think you have cocaine and then these like, no, he was selling art. It's like, is art illegal now? Is that what happened? Creativity is illegal, I guess. <laughs> I'm being oppressed. I'm being oppressed. <laughs> Sue, Sue. <laughs> All right, Jay, where can people find you at, man? Okay, they can they can uh, find me, obviously, on Facebook is Jay Moores, J-A-Y-M-O-O-E-R-S. Um, you can also find me on Instagram that way. Um, you can go to my website, which is www.edenparktales.com. Uh, Tales on that is T-A-L-E-S. Um, that is my little publishing house. You can, you can order comics through there. Um, I also have prints and stuff there. Um, but honestly, like the best way to reach me is probably instant messenger on Facebook, Instagram. I'm usually lurking. So give me a shout out. Um, make sure I link it all in the description. And thanks for listening to another episode of out of the blank podcast.